Hello, and welcome to Horror and Monster Collectibles, where today we're going to be taking a look at this bloody corpse. Now, this was originally done up by Jim Lawrence. Uh, the skull was done by an unknown sculptor, I believe, in China. But uh, we don't know who to give the credit to who sculpted this awesome skull. But Jim did all of the rest of it and put it all together and painted it up. Uh, he did a tremendous job on the paint up. But I wanted the guts to be more bloody and more gnarly. So I kind of amped them up and we will take a quick look and I will show you what I did to do that. But first, let's go ahead and spin this around. Alright guys, so I figured I would film some of this as I go. Now I got uh, this awesome blood set from Garage Kit Colors, which uh, we have Transparent Blood Red 1, Blood Red 2, and then uh, this is what I'm currently using is uh, Wound Red. And then they have a nice Scar Red, and then a Black Red. So what I'm doing is, is I'm going all through here and darkening in all the crevices. Um, I want this whole thing to pop a bit more. Um, what Jim did was amazing and I'm still using that texture that he has on there, but I'm just kind of popping everything by adding depth and then adding more color to it. So I have the scar red in here and all I'm doing right now currently is just shooting that all in through the crevices. So I'm going kind of big right now. And what I'll end up doing is in the deeper ones, I'll go with that black red. And then the idea is after this, to take all the highlights in there and pop those with a brighter red. while still leaving all that coloring that he has in here. Uh, he has some really good light coloring on there. So all I'm doing is going in with transparent colors and just coming over top of all that. And then I'll add a, uh, a gloss, real nice gloss coat to this and make it all pop more. You can see the depth I've added over here versus how it is on this side. And I'll just keep on doing that. So I've gone in and done all my shading. I decided not to use the black red. The wound red was dark enough to get the depth I wanted. So now I'm going to do some highlights and I have um, transparent blood red 2 in there now. You can kind of see on the paper how bright that is and I'm gonna just go over top um, in here not in the highest parts but just kind of the medium height I want to get like a maybe a brighter red on the very high points again just to get that depth and some really really gnarly gory red stuff in there and then also what I'll probably do is I want to try some of the special effects blood. Um, so we have this lighter blood and then they also have this uh, dark venous. So I want to try that too, maybe, uh, to see how it looks on this. I've never used that before, but I'd like to give it a shot. So what I'll end up doing is I'm just going to continue on with the lighter red and all the medium height areas and then we will come back all right now I've finished all the airbrushing and I'm going to go ahead and try this dark venous never worked with it before um, so I got a little bit in a cup here and all I'm gonna do is go in to all these darker places here and kind of really punch up 
all of the gnarliness to the texture. Try to duplicate some really sick wounds in here. Again, with this stuff, I'm just going in, since it's the, it's the darker venous blood, I'm just going in here to all the crevices, and I will try to use the standard, you know, some of the highlights. Alright, so I've gone in through here with the dark blood and I'm going to put some at the base and add some detail on here as far as blood that's kind of pulled up around all the guts. I'm kind of wetting that up and darken it up through here a bit. Trying to make it look as natural as possible. Alright, so I've gone in and I've done all of the dark blood, <clears throat> which I also kind of pulled it up around the bottom. It's not a paint though, so I don't know how it's going to look when it dries. It's supposed to mimic real blood as it dries, so we will see what that looks like. Hopefully it doesn't get too messed up. Uh, and then uh, which is, this is the same stuff, but a bright blood. Um, I'm going to go in through here and add the highlights on there. And hopefully this gives it a realistic look when it's all said and done. <clears throat> so I have some in my cup here. And I'm just going to go in and kind of like just touch up the highlighted areas. Now this is somewhat translucent when it's spread thin and I really don't want to cover up a lot of the detail work on here. I just want to kind of just brighten stuff up in here a little bit. So hopefully this gets the effect I'm looking for. I like it how it's put on anyway. We'll see how it dries and hopefully it'll look gnarly when it's all said and done. <clears throat> but I'm going to go through here and I'm going to apply this to the whole corpse and see how it goes. All right, so I've pretty much finished up all the blood work that I want to do. Uh, I'm happy with the colors uh, that it has. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let everything dry. I want to see how that uh, blood coagulates, if it does, or just how it dries. And hopefully all is good. Hopefully it remains uh, like real blood, but we will see. Uh, and then after everything dries, I'm just going to hit it with uh, Garage Kit Colors uh, Gloss top coat uh, just all of the fleshy parts and leave the bones dry just really punch up the wetness so here are the final results after I put the gloss coat on there and I again I really like the way that all of this dried up got some nice dark blood and some lighter colors on here and it's just shiny and gnarly and gross looking and fortunately I was able to retain all of the nice highlight colors that Jim had done in here and I feel like I accomplished my goal of just punching up the gore aspect of it and it looks quite gnarly this is one of my favorite pieces in my collection. It's just really, really gross guts. 
and there's so much texture and deep pockets in there. Like I just absolutely love this thing. Hopefully you guys do too. some of Jim's just super badass paintwork that he did on this skull. I wish that I could paint that well, but I can't. I am definitely a novice. But maybe one day. I do feel like I can do guts pretty good. Again, hopefully you guys dig this as much as I do. All right guys, that's about all there is to go over on this. Hopefully you enjoyed the process of making it bloody. Now there's probably 10 ways you can go about doing this. This is just the way that I tackled it. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that there's a lot of pros out there that would be able to do a better job than I did, uh, but I am learning and uh, I think that this came out pretty good. At least I'm pretty happy with it. And again, Jim is just such an incredibly talented artist. I love what he's done with this piece. I wish we knew the artist who sculpted the skull uh, because they are insanely talented as well. So what I will do is spin this around for you guys one more time and then leave you with a couple studio shots. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments and I'll be happy to answer them and feel free to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications for new videos. And until next time, I will see you guys later.